Hey guys, here to do another installment of Casket Conversations. This will be episode 11. Uh, first up, before I start talking about uh, the meat of what we're going to be talking about this episode, I just want to say I'm sorry for having this out a day late. I had all intent of making sure I had this out yesterday. But, uh, you know, sometimes life stuff happens and uh, I woke up with a really bad migraine and it didn't really go away. And once it did, I really just didn't feel like, you know, making an episode. But it's later tonight, um, so I, 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 feel, I finally feel up to doing it. So uh, here I am. So I do want to say that um, beforehand. So for those of you that do pay attention to this, thank you for listening. And let's get into the topics. Today we're going to be talking about the future of General Leia Organa, uh, the Rebels mid-season trailer, and actually the first episode, or the premiere of um, the mid-season started tonight. So I might talk about that a little bit as well. Uh, the fact that Rogue One has no opening crawl, uh, Cult of Chucky teaser trailer, and Gremlins 3. Uh, that's right. You heard me. Gremlins 3. Um, okay, so, uh, let's start with the first topic, the future of General Leia Organa. Now, um, obviously, you know, by now, I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, have heard about the unfortunate passing of Carrie Fisher, and, you know, so there's a lot of Star Wars fans out there that are really curious on what, uh, you know, Lucasfilm is going to do, and, um, spoilers if you haven't seen Rogue One. Um, something that has been on everybody's mind is the fact, you know, in Rogue One, they were able to bring back Grand Moff Tarkin and kind of do like a CGI version of him. So they kind of brought Peter Cushing back from the dead to be Tarkin in the movie. And, um, so, you know, there's a lot of debate on, uh, you know, are they going to do that? Should they get another actor? or actress to come in and, and, and take the role. Should they get rid of her in between films? You know, what what are they gonna do? And so, um, here's here's my opinion on what I think. And um uh yeah, um you know it's really it's really hard for me to say. Um, you know, I mean I know for the most part that whatever Lucasfilm does decide to do, I'll probably not have a problem with. And I want to say that up front, like, you know, uh, even though I have my opinion, um, as long as long as it's not something that is, is just ridiculously bad, like a lot of the stuff in the prequels, specifically in Attack of the Clones, I can't really see in an equation that they'll do something that just completely turns me off of episode nine. You know, I just, I just don't see it happening. Um, so with that said, what I want to see happen is I actually do want them to see, see them do a CGI Leia like they did Tarkin. I firmly believe that it is impossible to push the story forward without her. I haven't even read all of the canon books and all of the stuff that I hear, but from everyone that I pay attention to on YouTube and even some of my friends that pay attention to um, Star Wars things, it is very evident that Leia was going to have a huge part to play in the future of the Star Wars franchise. And so it's basically one of those things where it's like, look, you can't back out of that now. Like, you know, yes. We all, as a community, as fans, as co-workers of hers, you know, as pe- people at Lucasfilm, yes, we all have suffered this horrible, awful tragedy. But guess what, guys? That doesn't change the state of Star Wars and what you are trying to do with the story. And you can't... I don't think you can back away from that now. I really don't. Um, I feel like... I feel like if they were to take a step back and do things differently than they had already planned, it would come off very, uh, I don't want to say contrived, but it would, it would, it would, it would be very superficial. It would, it would be very in your face. 
And that is the worst thing that you can do, you know, um, especially since, you know, um, since a lot of people have brought up, you know, Furious 7 and what they had to do with uh, the, the passing of Paul Walker. They were in the middle of shooting when his accident happened and when he died and they were able to finish the movie and make a really good product. And, and the end result was a very entertaining, very good film. Lucasfilm is in, is a, in even a better place, if you want to call it that. I mean, nobody, I mean, we'd all prefer Carrie Fisher to still be alive. But since it happened, you know, they're in a better situation because they haven't even started filming on episode nine yet. So they, they really have this open slate to do whatever they want to. And why not take this opportunity to not make any changes at all? You know, I don't know why there needs to be any changes. I mean, I'm sure there might have to be some minor things, but if they were able to do what they did with Tarkin, I don't see why that should keep them from doing this with her character, you know, um, because look, and this is why I say this, and, and I know there's a lot of people out there that do not want to see G.I. Leia, but hear me out on this. Okay, and I'm going to be blunt, and I might even be a little mean when I say this. But here's the only other two options. One, you kill her off screen, and I swear to God, if they kill her off off screen, and all we get is either a little fucking paragraph in the opening crawl, or opening the movie with her funeral, I'm going to be pissed the fuck off. Because you do not do that to a central character of Star Wars like Leia. You don't do that. You know, now if, if it was a side character, if it was a minor character, that would be different. But you do not do this with Leia, especially with what she means to the franchise. Okay? So, you know, what are you supposed to do? So, you know, so you do it off screen. Well, that just screams, we weren't ready for this and we couldn't come up with something viable. You don't, you don't do that or you recast and guess what that doesn't work either because you know what made Leia Leia was Carrie Fisher it was her from day one in the original Star Wars all the way up until now it was Carrie Carrie is synonymous with Leia. She made that character. You take her out of that, and it doesn't work. Now, they're going to have to get past the voice. You know, maybe there's a good enough voice actor out there, or maybe with technology and such, they're able to recreate her voice and social sound like Carrie Fisher. But, I mean, I think they need to do CG. They need to get a body double. And they need to put, they need to do the same thing they did with Tarkin. Because, now I'm just throwing this name out there. Because because I've been thinking about this for a, several days. You know, and um, the only name that I could think of that I would want even to come close to playing Leia was Glenn Close. If Lucasfilm announced that they were able to get Glenn Close to pick up Leia for the for episode 9, I still wouldn't love it. But you know, it would be like, okay. Because Glenn Close is amazing. She's got that spunky attitude that Carrie has. You know, she's, she's older. You know, she's got the same body type she's you know and i'm just being realistic with that that's not me judging or anything like that but there's a lot of similarities there so there's that but other than her unless you go with a complete unknown who could you possibly get to replace carrie fisher you just can't the best bet and it sucks that we're in this position, but the best bet is having a CG Leia for episode 9. Because it's going to be so god-awfully apparent 
if they do anything else, you know. And I suppose a good in-between that they could do is... Because we don't know what's going to happen in episode 8. So if currently this isn't part of the story, I would highly recommend them shifting things if they can to make this happen. Because this is the only other solution um, that they could do. Um, and it would affect both 8 and 9. And it could they could have somewhere towards the end of the movie, Leia being killed. You know? Um, or something. Or, or have something leading up to her death at the very beginning of episode 9. That is something they could do. That way, you might have a CGI Leia, but she's not in the movie very long, so it's not going to take everybody out for two hours. You know, you have her killed off, probably more than likely by Kylo Ren or Snoke, and you call it a day. That is the only other option, whether it's her being stabbed by a lightsaber or blown up or whatever the hell you wanted to do. That's the only other option, is to do this kind of mishmash in-between thing, you know? And I feel like with Ryan Johnson being the director that he is, Colin Trevero being the director that he is, and knowing what I know about uh, Kathleen Kennedy, they don't seem like professionals that would do something like that. Because I've got a feeling that episode 8, even though we don't have a title for it yet, is going to go down as one of the best Star Wars films. I have a high suspicion that right now, Empire and Rogue One are my top two favorite Star Wars movies. I've got a high suspicion that after I go see episode 8, it's going to be number 2 or 3. It's going to be Empire Rogue One Episode 8. I can almost guarantee you. Because that's the kind of filmmaker that Ryan Johnson is. And if I'm right about that, they're going to hold this very close to the chest. And it's going to be a hard bullet to bite. And there's going to be people that don't like it. But the best solution is just move forward with a CG Leia. Believe me, right now it might seem like it's too soon. Right now it might seem like technology is not good enough. But look how far we've come since Ant-Man with Michael Douglas. You know, look how far we've come since Tron Legacy with Jeff Bridges when they did it in that. You can't deny that from Jeff Bridges and Tron to Tarkin and Rogue One, that the technology has not gotten extremely better because it has. They've been able to do some incredible things with this. And I think they'll be able to do it. So, you know, that's my thoughts. I think they need to do a CG Leia. Let me know in the comments what you think. Um, and, you know, just be respectful respectful of everybody else's opinions. So um, so the next topic is the, Re the Rebels mid-season trailer. Um, and since I did get to see uh, the episode, I'll probably end up talking about the episode just a little bit, too. Um, um, this trailer... I mean, that's the one thing that they've been able to do with Re uh, Rebels that no one can deny. They've put out some freaking incredible trailers. Um, obviously, I could jump to the thing that most people do. Um, but there was a lot that I actually liked the, about the trailers. I like that they're hinting that we're finally going to see a lot more with Tarkin, a lot more badassery and um he's gonna he's gonna be like a force to be reckoned with um i like seeing the stuff with the team and ezra and the whole st stuff with ezra and sabine i'm really curious about um that whole arc and and, and whatnot um 
But, you know, I'm kind of with everyone else too, and I'm I'm going to be honest. Uh, yeah, it was totally the Obi-Wan and Darth Maul scene at the end of the trailer that really just sent chills up my arms. Um, I'm total i'm super excited for this i just am you know um you know um you know it's funny when when it was on tv and airing while i enjoyed clone wars i only really paid attention to it during like the first and maybe second season and because of other shows being on and um other life thing things i didn't really pay much attention to it. Um, I think maybe because of uh, work and stuff, you know, it, it just wasn't something that uh, that I really, um, yeah, paid attention to. But um, you know, I finally went back and I watched all of Clone Wars all the way through chronologically, and yeah, the first season is horrible because there's so much filler. And God, the Jar Jar episode. That's all I need to say. So, you know, when stuff started coming out about Rebels, while I was excited about it, I gotta be honest, I, I was kind of worried we were gonna get, you know, another clone, Clone Wars. And at that time, I had yet to finish all of Clone Wars. Um, so, um, I made it through clone wars and i freaking love clone wars um ahsoka is by far one of my favorite star wars characters now and i um i didn't watch rebels until season two had already started um and i binged watched the whole first season and the first half of season two and i'm i'm in love with the show now i mean i went and bought uh the other day you know i posted on my instagram I bought a Ezra Funko Pop because, I mean, I, he's my favorite character on the show. I'm sorry. I know there are better characters, but Ezra's the one I like the most. Okay? I'm sorry. I can't help it. Okay? Um, but, you know, but I, I, I love this show, and I can't wait to see what they keep doing with it. I know we probably only got another two or three seasons left out of this show, and it's going to be sad to see it go. Um, and it's even one of those things where I'm debating, do I buy the episodes individually or do I just wait for like the complete set? What do I do? Um, you know, because I really want the show on Blu-ray. I really, really do. Um, but this episode, the premiere, I want to talk about the premiere a little bit. Um, this was a really good premiere. Um, we got to see Saw Gerrera, which if you don't know who that is, he's in the Clone Wars and he has a very significant role in Rogue One. Uh, at least I think so. I mean, I mean, he's not super significant in the sense of stuff, because I don't want to spoil too much if you haven't seen it yet. But, uh, but because of me knowing who the character is, I I think it's a pretty, I think it's a good role for that character. I'll say that. Um, yeah, so we get we get we get to see Saw again. We get to go to Geonosis, and we get to see what's going on there. And I thought it was a really solid episode. You know, I gotta say, I uh, I enjoyed it a lot. Um, if you got to see it too, let me know what you thought in the comments below. Um, let's go to the next topic, um, which is the fact that Rogue One has no opening crawl. So look, this is something that I talked about in both of my reviews I did for Rogue One. I did this in a couple of the other Star Wars video, um, videos I think I did recently. But... I'm going to talk about this again, and I'm not going to let up on this again, because I'm going to keep talking about it and add my voice to all of the other voices that are talking about this. And so this is just going to be another place that I put up my frustration. Okay, Lucasfilm needs to stop with the BS excuses on why there's no opening call in Rogue One, because... The evidence just doesn't support it. It literally is just a bunch of jargon. I wish Kathleen Kennedy would just come out and say, you know why we didn't have a crawl? Because I didn't fucking want one there. That was our decision. And we're sticking by it. Because that's what it ultimately comes down to. It's a fuck you fans. We don't care what you think. We're doing our thing. And we're sticking with it. And it's bullshit. You know. 
because, you know, this is my honest to God opinion on Star Wars as a whole. The prequels killed a lot of the love for Star Wars and a lot of people, me included, you know, that it didn't happen right away because when I was a kid, you know, growing up, you know, I loved, I loved all of the prequels. But as I got older and as I dug in more to it, and it did have a lot to do with who my friends were at the time and growing up and all that kind of stuff. But I got to a point where when I measured the prequels up to the original trilogy, it did not hold up, in my opinion. I know I always thought that there were good things in there. I was never one of those people that was completely like, well, there's nothing good in them. But for the most part, it really did kill my love for Star Wars. I didn't talk about Star Wars at all. I had all six movies on DVD. I never watched them. You know, they just sat on my shelf. You know, my sister, my younger sister, became the Star Wars fan of the family. You know, and I was fine with that. I decided my thing was going to be Lord of the Rings. You know, that was my new love, you know. And I was glad that it was. I didn't have a problem with that, you know. So when Disney bought Lucasfilm and all the stuff started coming out, Force Awakens was was announced and Kathleen Kennedy said all the things that she had. The thing that I feel like Disney and Kathleen Kennedy didn't understand was, look, you not only have to do what's best for Star Wars, but you've got to pick your battles. All right, because us fans have been there with Star Wars through so much. You know, one of my favorite authors, um, he's a Christian author. He, he does a bunch of theology books, but in one of his chapters, you know, he basically says, you know, if um, if Empire Strikes Back was the wedding, Attack of the Clones was the divorce, you know, I mean, seriously, like that's kind of what it was like, you know. So now that we've got this chance to rebuild the love of Star Wars and everybody, and hey, I'll be the first one to say For Force Awakens was a big jump forward. Absolutely. You know, it got me to fall in love with Star Wars again. And me saying that is a big thing. Because I never thought I would feel what I feel right now ever again. You know, to me, Star Wars was dead. It was something I grew up with. It definitely would be something that I pass on to my future kids. But other than that, it's dead. You know, it is what it is. Let's move on, you know. So the fact that they're in a position where they're able to tell all these new stories. and they, they You know, I got Lords of the Sith and read it. And it's such a brilliant book. And Lords of the Sith saved a lot of the prequels for me. Clone Wars saved the prequels for me. And granted, that did come out pre-Disney. But, you know, all of these things save Star Wars for me. So now, they're, we're in good hands, you know. We're like, okay, Force Awakens was great. But now you're seriously telling us you're not going to put a crawl? The one thing, if nothing else, that is synonymous with Star Wars. It's that opening sequence. You can do whatever else you want with the movie. You could do a, mo a Star Wars movie completely in black and white. You could do a, a Star Wars movie completely animated. You did before. It's called The Clone Wars. You could do a Star Wars movie com completely just full of... You could do a silent film that's Star Wars. How cool would that be? You could do all these different things. But don't you dare tell us that... The reason you didn't have a crawl was because you're trying to be different and set apart from the saga films. No. We don't need you to, to spoon feed us. Well, I don't know what this is. What is this? Is this a saga film? No. You could have easily had Star Wars. Da, 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 a Star Wars story. Rogue One. Blah, 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 blah. That simple. A Star Wars story. Rogue One crawl or backwards rogue one a star wars story crawl it's that easy it is that easy the minute people went to see that movie 
and they saw Star Wars, Rogue One, a Star Wars story, they would instantly know this is not a saga film. This isn't connected to Force Awakens. This isn't connected to the original films. And you know what? I watched um, uh, John Campier posted a video uh, where he was talking about this. I'm gonna I'm gonna echo a sentiment. So the reason you didn't have a crawl in this is to set yourself apart. But yet you've got Darth Vader in the film and Leia in the film. Are you kidding me? Stop with the BS. For me as a fan, the only way that I'm gonna get over this is when this movie comes out on Blu-ray. There better fucking be a version of this movie that has the crawl at the beginning. It doesn't have to be the main version. If I have to spend an extra five bucks to get the special edition to have it, I am more than willing to do it because that's how much I want this crawl. It's vital to Star Wars. Now, the rest of the movie could be the same, you know, but that crawl has to be there or else it's not Star Wars. It's just not. I'm sorry. And I hate saying that because, again, like I said a few minutes ago when I was talking about um, the other Star Wars stuff, Rogue One is my second favorite Star Wars movie. That's a big deal. The movie is brilliant. You know? But I can't let this go. You know? I cannot let this go. Because they can't. Lucasfilm can't get away with this. It's, it's not right. It's not okay. You know, I can honestly tell you that I would rather have another set of three prequels than have a Star Wars movie without a crawl. I would rather them put out shit films, you know, but have the aesthetic, have the, you know, have the story because at the end of the day, it's still Star Wars. But this, this, what is this? I mean, Universal... This is like what it would have looked like if, if another company put up a Star Wars movie. Like, if this was Fox. This sounds like something Fox would do. Or better yet, this sounds like something Warner Brothers would do. Do you really want Lucasfilm to be synonymous with fucking Warner Brothers after all the shit they've done to their movies? I don't think that you do. Seriously, I don't think you do. And I'm just going to leave it there. Please, Lucasfilm. Please, for the love of God. You know how passionate Star Wars fans are. You see how we've had these creators that have done this de despecialized versions of the film. And so beautifully, I've got to say, too. I really want to get my hands on them for um, some friends of mine. Because um, I actually don't mind the special edition, so I wouldn't get it for me. But um, I, I, I wish I could get my hands on it, because I actually have purchased a copy. Um, so I've got... Um, so. Uh, I haven't figured out how to exactly to go through all of that and do it. Um, but, but you know, you see how passionate Star Wars fans are. The fact that they go through all of this labor and work to return Star Wars to what it originally was when it was released. Believe you me, this is a way. Because guess what? Two, three, four, five bucks is a lot of money. When we're talking about millions of fans, or thousands of fans, you know? This is Star Wars. And I'm telling you, Lucasfilm's choices is this. They can either fix this for us fans, and, and they can milk it. Like I said, they can have two different versions of the film. They could have the fan edit of the film and the version that was released in theaters. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with owning both versions. And I will spend the extra $5. Or they could just release the one that they already released. And I promise you, some fan, someday, is going to take it upon themselves to fix it. And when they do, people like me will gladly show support for what they do. And that's all I'm going to say. That's the last thing I'm going to say. Um... So the last two topics I'm not really going to talk a whole lot about, um, but I did want to bring them up because I do enjoy these franchises. Uh, the next one is the the cult of Ch Ch the cult of Chucky teaser announcement. Um, so yeah, there's going to be another Chucky movie. 
Um, you know, I actually hold a really special place in my heart for for Chucky because as a kid growing up, me and my sisters had a bunch of dolls and stuff growing up, and Chucky scared the fuck out of me. I'm just gonna say it. He did. He scared the fuck out of me. And um once I got older, I'd probably say nineteen or so, um, I grew to love Chucky. Um I really appreciated the humor and what the character was. And um, I actually, my favorite Chucky movie is not one of the original three. My favorite Chucky movie is Seed of Chucky. That movie makes me laugh so hard. I love the jokes of the movie. It puts a smile on my face every time I watch it. It's so much fun. I love the character. And I thought Curse of Chucky was really, really good too. Um, So I'm, I'm excited for this. I really... I'm really excited for Cult of Chucky, and um, that's another uh, franchise that I really need to get on Blu-ray because I haven't bought bought any of them. Um, Seed of Chucky is the only one I have, and it's on DVD, and so I could definitely use an upgrade, so to speak. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think of Chucky down below. I, re- I really enjoy him. Um, but now I get to talk about something I enjoy even more than Chucky. Which is Gremlins. Ah, Gremlins 3. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? And that's not out of anger. Well, a little bit, but not for what you think. Here's the deal. For years now, since I was a teenager, there have been rumors about them doing a Gremlins 3, okay? I am 27 years old. And they're going to bring this shit out of the dirt? And they're going to tease us again? We're doing, like, a poss- Are you serious? Like, there's a possibility that Gremlins 3 is going to happen. Look, I've said it to a lot of my friends over the years, and I'm saying it again. Look, as time progresses and special effects and technology get better and better, dude, I would love a Gremlins 3. You could make those Gremlins scary. And I'm not even talking about doing CG, but a merging of the two. Imagine a merging of practical effect and and uh, CG effect. That would be so cool. And what they could do with Gizmo. I mean, they could make Gizmo look so lifelike and so real. I mean, look at what Disney was able to do with Jungle Book and how realistic those animals looked. Can you imagine Gizmo? Oh my god. Just, that would be so cool. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. I mean, I, I, you know, um, if you look in, if you look, if you search it in Google, Gremlins 3, um, 2017, um, and then after you click enter or actually search it, click on the news and there'll be like five, six things that pop up there between the end of uh, December and, and now of articles talking about it. Um, I can't remember which source was the earliest one, but they all basically talk about the same thing. Um, and basically Zach Gillig, um, Gall- Gallagher, Galligan, whatever the fuck his name is, but the, the dude who played Billy in Gremlins did an interview and, um, talked about that. They're still, they're still trying to make it work. And uh, now granted, he's just an actor. Um, so what does he know? But, uh, and there were some other things that were said in the, in there too. It wasn't just that, but that was the, that was a lot of it. Um, but I, I, you know, I gotta say, I, like I said, I would be ecstatic for a Gremlins 3 because those movies hold such a dear place in my heart. I love those movies. So yeah, guys, um, this is the 11th installment of Casket Conversations. Um, I appreciate you listening. Um, and let me know what you think in the comments below about all these different topics, you know. Um, you know, there, the, these were some, uh, these are some fun ones for me to talk about, especially the fact that it's basically, uh, a Star Wars episode again. Um, uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything that I need to announce. Um, I will say, if you haven't gone and checked out my website, the link will be in the description. Go and check it out. Go and some love. I'm going to be doing 
Um, over time, I'm going to be doing a lot more stuff over there. Um, right now, I'm linking it, linking a lot of my YouTube stuff over there. I've got a page on the site for Cats and Conversations, you know. Um, but I will be doing site content only. Um, so if you're interested in that, um, I'm trying to decide on what kind of stuff I want to do on there and stuff. So you have, if you have any suggestions or things that you would like to see, let me know because I might actually implement them. Um, but uh, other than that, guys, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram, on YouTube, and um, um, yeah, guys, um, I will see you guys in the next episode. Peace out.